All right, Paul, you and I are observers. We're not theorists. And these theorists come up with these crazy ideas, of crazy ideas of universes coming and going and expanding forever and maybe turning in reverse. We want some facts. And so we've seen that almost everything depends on how much stuff there's in the universe. So how do you think you would go about trying to figure out how much stuff there is in the universe. Yeah, so the idea was that if the density is over this critical threshold, the expansion of space will eventually stop and things will come back together again. And we're also in a universe that has a spherical closed finite geometry, whereas if there's not enough mass, it will expand forever at a nice fast rate. Well, that's pretty easy. We just have to measure the density of the universe. We can't really take a bit of the universe here because this is not an average part of the universe. Most of the universe is in deep intergalactic space. But we know how much stars weigh. Um, so we count the number of stars in a typical galaxy, 10 to the 10, 10 to the 11, something like that. Yep. And so that gives us a mass of a galaxy, and we count all the galaxies. We take a picture like this one, the uh, it's a very deep Hubble Space Telescope Im image, yep. and we count the galaxies per cubic megaparsec or something and get a density. Okay, so if we do that, and uh, I won't say I've done this, but people have, and if you go through and you count up all the stars, you get a number which is about, oh, maybe a couple tenths of a percent of the critical density, that number of 9 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms per meter cubed. So we don't even get, you know, we get to a sort of one part in a thousand or so. Okay. Of so that's game over. The universe's density is too low, so it's an open universe will expand forever. Good. Okay. Good. Done. Yeah, but, you know, I worry there might be something out there other than just stars. And indeed, as we talked about in the first course in this series, there's a lot of other stuff out there beyond stars, the so-called dark matter. How do we know that's there? Well, if you look at a nice spinning spiral galaxy like this one, you can measure how fast things are spinning around using the Doppler effect. And for anything to spin in a circle, there must be a centripetal force towards the middle of the circle to balance the rotation. So we know the speed. We can therefore work out how much force there must be towards the middle, and that must be supplied by gravity. The gravity of the galaxy must be holding things together so they don't go flying off into space. Yep. So we can measure how fast things move around the outskirts of galaxies and therefore use that to weigh the galaxy. And what do we find? Well, in 1970, Ken Freeman, who's here at the ANU, did this for the first time in detail. And he used radio waves to actually measure gas a long ways out. And he found a very funny thing. The galaxy was spinning much, much faster than the amount of stars would indicate there was mass. Sort of almost like a factor of, you know, five or ten more than you would expect. So there was missing matter. And then Vera Rubin did this for many, many galaxies. And it's a pattern we keep on seeing everywhere. And Bosma in uh, the Netherlands also did it. So it's a consistent pattern that we see in almost every galaxy. They're spinning much faster than they should, given the stars in them. So there's clearly a lot of something dark, trickle dark matter, that we can't see it, as we talked about in the first part of the course. Most likely it's in the form of some weirdo subatomic particle, at least most of it is. Yep. And while there's some of it in galaxies, when you get to bigger and bigger scales, you see more and more of it. For example, if you look at clusters of galaxies, here's a galaxy cluster. Uh, this is a composite image. The white part of it's taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, and the purple is taken in X-rays with the uh, Chandra Space Telescope. And this cluster of galaxies has two pieces of evidence there's dark matter here. First of all, you can see these elongated shapes around here. That's gravitational lenses. Yep. That's background galaxies whose light's being bent around. And by looking at the amount of bending, you can work out how much mass there is in the cluster. And once again, it's an awful lot more than the mass of all the stars you can see in it. And there's really no way it's going to miss anything. It's pretty sensitive to what's ever there, yes. uh, more or less. Anything so. that does gravity. Yeah, anything that has gravity. Good. And also the, the, the uh, purple color here is X-ray gas, very hot gas that's fallen in. And from pressure balance of this, uh, gravity's trying to pull it in, pressure's trying to push it out. We can measure the pressure by looking at the temperature and intensity. You can work out once again how much mass there is. And once again, the answer comes out to agree with the gravitational lensing. There's far too much mass in here. Right. So that gas is like 10 million degrees, so it's moving very quickly. But it's puffed up to a, a megaparsec across three million light years. And so you've got to have a huge amount of stuff. So we add up everything's there. We sort of get 20% of the way to uh, the universe being um, just right to having, you know, being flat. So game over. We're there. We're done. Right? 20%. It's an open universe. Pretty yeah. close. But the theorists didn't like this because inflation should really force the 
flatness of the universe to be very, very close to critical density, whereas we're a factor of five off. But this so could there be some more matter on even bigger scales? Yeah, there might be. This is just a lump of, you know, a couple million light years across. So maybe we need to look at bigger scales. And there's reasons to be maybe suspicious. Yes, now on bigger scales still, there is a way to find out the mass, and that's by what are called peculiar motions. Now, if you remember, we talked about a few lessons ago the idea that space is expanding, the Hubble law, that everything is moving away from us. And you might have thought at the time, hold on a moment, I've heard that not every galaxy is moving away from us. In particular, a very nearby galaxy, Andromeda M31, is moving towards us. At yeah, like 240 kilometers per second. So here's a simulation of what's going to happen to us and Andromeda. So this is the Milky Way galaxy, and we're talking about the number of billions of years here. From now? From now. And we're going to see, coming in behind Brian in a second, Andromeda M31. All right, we so go. we're off rotating, and here's Andromeda minding its business, coming towards us at 240 kilometers per second. Yes, so it's blue shifted, not red shifted. If you look at the spectral right. lines, they move to short wavelengths rather than long wavelengths. I seem to be obscuring it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so we're now they're three going, billion years in the future. And what's going to happen? Oh gosh, this doesn't look good in 3.8 billion years. Oh, they, well, it's sort of a train wreck. They sort of gone right through themselves because, of course, they're made up of stars and a little bit of gas. be a lot of gas that will collide, but they will sort of merge together and make a super galaxy. Yes. So, what's going on here? How can another galaxy be moving towards us when we've just heard about space expanding? So maybe we can use the peculiar motions of the entire sky. Let's think about how we might do that. 